So uh, once we uh, figured out um, or convinced ourselves of Huygens' principle and uh, how the pattern of interference occurs, uh, should we have, so pretty much to have that uh, interference pattern, we needed the following. We needed two coherent um, uh, sources, right? And what better could be than getting uh, two wavelets from front wave of the same source. Uh, we need a, a small uh, distance between the sources, right? Uh, and usually this uh, distance is comparable to the wavelength of the, of the uh, wave that we're studying, okay? And we need some sort of a screen or detector, if you will, uh, a distance uh, D, which is much farther, much greater than the actual distance between the two uh, sources, all right? Uh, so what Young did, he got a monochromatic uh, monochromatic source. What does it mean, monochromatic? It means a unique uh, frequency. All right, so the same color. So usually, nowadays we use uh, laser. Okay. And then what he did, he put a uh, slit in uh, front of uh, this uh, source. So he put two slits. Very, very narrow, which are a distance uh, D between them. So remember what happened when you have two slits, right? You have pretty much two uh, sources that become identical. So you have an S1 here and S2, and then you place a screen in front, and as a result, what you get is a uh, interference pattern. What does it mean, interference pattern? You get a bright, remember we said constructive, you would see a bright um, spot or dot, or they are called fringes. Okay, so this is a fringe and is a bright one. And the central one usually is uh, slightly bigger than the others. And then you get some dark uh, fringes, which means uh, constructive, uh, sorry, destructive interference. All right, and then they keep on alternating. So what will happen is uh, if you were to do this experiment, you would see some red uh, fringes, all right, on one side, and then, of course, symmetrical on the other side. Okay, and the same math that was applied to any generic uh, sources of waves, if you have a uh, the mth um, bright fringe, Okay, uh, then what would you do is you want to figure out a couple of things. One is at what angle will that uh, bright fringe uh, be located and um, uh, what distance from the center uh, based on how far the uh, screen is from the slits, okay? Uh, by the way, if you were to look at this from the front, what you would see, let's see if I can do this, you would see pretty much something like this. You would see a bright uh, fringe in the middle, which is pretty wide. And then you get a smaller one, and then a smaller one, but also they get dimmer, all right? because of the nature of, um, of um, the nature of the photons, right? Because it's so much uh, uh, energy that it's been shared now among all these fringes are the same amount of photons that have to cover all these surfaces. All right, so this is called, this is a central one, all right? This is for M equal to zero. Then you have the first, the second, and so on and so forth, all right? Um, 
A question I could ask here uh, is what would happen if you use uh, a different uh, kind of, uh, so we're gonna write the relationship between d theta x and d, the large case, uh, large uh, uppercase d, and of course the wavelength of this uh, particular light uh, or wave being transmitted. Um, so what, my question was, what would happen if you were to use green light instead of red? Would you get the same distance between the uh, between uh, the fringes or smaller or larger? So remember what green, red, or blue means for light. It means different frequency, hence a different wavelength, okay? Um, let's write the equation um, before we go any further. So remember that D sine theta is equal to m lambda for constructive and um, d sine theta is equal to 2m plus 1 lambda over 2 and this is for destructive all right and of course uh, using a small angle approximation we have d x m over d equal to either m lambda or 2m plus 1 lambda over 2. Remember, this is for constructive, this is for destructive, bright, dark, okay? Um, so as you can see, the lambda does have a, a, a say in, uh, oh, and a delta x, as you remember, it was, um, which is a distance between delta x is pretty much this, the distance between two adjacent uh, fringes, it was uh, d uh, lambda over uh, d, all right? So as you can see that the uh, distance between fringes does depend on lambda. So if the lambda increases, the distance between fringes uh, increases. So if you were to use a white light in this uh, experiment, which as we all know, it contains all the colors, then what would you see is the following. All right, so actually what you see is the rainbow. As you can see, the blue is closer and the red is further away, which means that the XM for blue is smaller than XM for red, because as you know, the red light has a higher frequency, therefore a smaller a wavelength, sorry, the other way around, has a lower frequency, therefore a higher wavelength, whereas blue has a smaller wavelength, okay? So the lambda for blue is less than the lambda for red, and that's why you do get that when you do an interference pattern with a white color, okay? Uh, so this is the double slit experiment. These are the equations that are relevant to us for solving problems. Uh, and this is the diagram that we have to use. And that's the terminology fringes, dark and bright, which are minimum and maximum order, the distance from the center. This is called the central um, uh, fringe, all right, or um, a bright spot. And uh, that's what uh, uh, Young was able to perform, an experiment of this uh, nature, that for once and for all, uh, humanity was convinced that light indeed is a wave.